Hi everyone, my name is Blaze Douglas and I, along with my partner Rachel Walker, are here on behalf of the Children and Youth Law Clinic of the University of Miami School of Law. My partner Rachel Walker and I are both certified legal interns at the Children and Youth Law Clinic this semester. We are here today to provide you with a um, general overview of health programs and a variety of uh, agencies that can provide some assistance and support services to families with developmentally disabled individuals. The Children and Youth Law Clinic at the University of Miami works on behalf of foster youth and individuals and families affiliated with the dependency system in order to help assist them through any legal matters they may have. We'd be happy to answer any questions you have and our contact information will be included at the end of this presentation. If you have any questions, you may call the clinic and if you're concerned about any particular legal matter you may have, you can contact the clinic as well to speak to us. We're gonna to begin today by discussing a little bit about Medicaid. Medicaid is a general health insurance program that provides help with general health and health care needs. Medicaid covers things, Medicaid is not specifically geared towards people with developmental disabilities, but it covers things like general health problems for people who meet certain income requirements. E EPSDT is a um, program that covers children under Medicaid. It's a broader coverage for children as opposed to people who are covered in the Medicaid as adults or families under Medicaid. EPSDT may provide a broader coverage of services for people who do have developmental disabilities. However, these treatment services must be prescribed by an actual medical physician before an individual can get these services under the Medicaid program. In addition to Medicaid, there are Medicaid waiver programs. These programs are provide services to developmentally disabled Floridians who have goals to participate in their community, avoid institutionalization, and live independently. These Medicaid waiver programs are designed to provide a limited and less costly community-based alternative to institutionalized care. These Medicaid waiver programs are funded by the federal programs for Medicaid and Medicare and matching state dollars. When agencies, such as the Agency for Persons with Disabilities, have funding available for these waiver programs, the agency will offer enrollment in this program to individuals who are on a wait list. The number of people who may be enrolled in each one of these Medicaid waiver programs each year is dependent upon the legislative appropriations for each fiscal year. Pro agencies like the Agency for Persons with Disability administer the Medicaid waiver programs. In 2004, the Agency for Persons with Disabilities, also known as, the a as APD, became a separate agency from the Department of Children and Families. APD is now specifically tasked with serving the needs of Floridians with developmental disabilities. APD works with local communities and private service, service providers in order to assist people who have developmental disabilities and their families. APD provides assistance by identifying the needs of these people and providing various services and supports to help them. One of the programs that APD administers is the Home and Community-Based Waiver Services Program that provides supports and services to developmentally delayed individuals and their families. The Home and Community-Based Services Program has a goal of allowing recipients to live as independently as possible in their own home and to achieve productive lives as close to as normal as possible. Services to this program are provided based on an individual's need for the service. However, not all individuals who qualify for this program will receive services. There is a waitlist to receive services that is based on the date of one's eligibility determination. Some services through this program require a professional assessment to determine the scope of the treatment that is needed. Eligible individuals can live within their own local communities and they can choose their support coordinators and providers for their needed services. We'll explain more about support coordinators and service providers later on in the presentation. Through the Home and Community-Based Service Program is the Developmental Disability Waiver Program. This program allows for the provision of services in a variety of locations in one's community and it's an alternative to care in an institutional setting. Services to this program may be provided to an individual in their own home, their family home, or in a residential facility such as a group home or a foster home. This program offers 28 supports and services in order to assist individuals with developmental disabilities, and this program has varying financial limits on the services that may be, may be provided. These limits are set based on one's tier assignment. We're going to explain more about one's tier assignment and the tier system later on in the presentation. All services provided through this, through this program require determination of medical necessity and prior authorization. Here is a list of all the available services through the Home and Community-Based Service Program. As you can see, it's a very extensive list, and these services are geared towards people with developmental disabilities. Some services, like support coordination, for example, are covered under these Medicaid waiver programs, 
However, they may not be available to individuals under a Medicaid program. This is why people should pursue an application in a Medicaid waiver program so that they can get services that are geared towards developmentally delayed individuals and some services that may not be covered through other means. If you wish to apply for APD services, you may call the Miami-Dade or the Broward office, whose numbers are listed here, or there's, here's the mailing address for the local Miami-Dade office. You can download an application off the website we have listed here, or you can go into this local area office if you need assistance with the application or if you have any questions about the application process. Now I'm going to turn things over to my partner, Rachel, to explain a little bit more about the process. Hi, my name is Rachel. Blaze just discussed the various programs, and I will be discussing how one is deemed eligible for these programs. APD serves five different developmental disabilities. Down syndrome, autism, spina bifida, cerebral palsy, mental retardation, and prayer willy syndrome. APD serves children three years or older. However, the child must receive a diagnosis before the age of 18. So even if you don't foresee using the services until the child is older, it is worth it to apply now. Also, you must be a Florida resident. In order to qualify for APD, you must have a developmental disability. Those disabilities are defined in both the administrative regulations and the Florida statute. You must also meet certain income requirements. A child trying to qualify under the disability of autism must have an evaluation completed by a psychiatrist or a psychologist. If you are already a client of CARD or ASAC and already have a completed evaluation, you should submit that evaluation with your application. APD has a very narrow definition of autism. This definition may differ from how autism is more commonly viewed. A child who is medically diagnosed as being on the spectrum does not necessarily meet APD's definition of autism. Even though a child meets has a medical di diagnosis of autism, this does not mean that they are eligible for APD services. This slide illustrates that APD considers only the diagnosis of autism and not other diagnoses on the spectrum. However, a diagnosis is not enough. A child must also meet APD's specific definition of autism. Under the Florida statute, Autism is defined as, quote, a pervasive neurologically based developmental disability of extended duration, which causes severe learning, communication, and behavior disorders with onset during infancy or childhood. Indiv individuals with autism exhibit impairment in so reciprocal social interaction, impairment in verbal and nonverbal communication, and imaginative ability, and, marked and a markedly restricted repertoire of activities and interests. The Florida Administrative Regulations further define autism and requires that a child meet six of the listed 12 features. So what does this mean? It means that in order to qualify for benefits, your child must meet the specific criteria in the Florida statute. As you may be aware, the DSM-5 will be making changes to the medical definition of autism. It remains to be seen if these changes will affect the legal definition. If these changes are incorporated by the legislature, they will likely not take effect immediately, as legislative changes tend to be slow moving. So how does APD decide? Essentially, you file your application, APD will then review personal information such as medical records, family history, and school records to determine if you meet the criteria. You can submit any evaluations if, that you may have. If no previous reports are available, APD will obtain the necessary evaluations. Often, APD will refer applicants to different doctors to obtain a separate evaluation. Often, these conflicting medical reports can lead to several problem areas. For example, the statute is somewhat vague and it may be difficult to know if your child qualifies. The statute discusses severe communication and behavior disorder and it may be difficult to know exactly what severe means. 
Also, doctors may have different opinions as to whether or not a particular disorder is severe. Also, your child may only meet some of the criteria of autism, but not all of it. Even if you are concerned about some of these areas, it is still worth it to apply. You will have many opportunities to present your side as to why you qualify. So what do you do if you get denied? If you disagree, you have a right to a fair hearing. You may request a fair hearing by filing a written request with the agency no later than 30 days after you received the denial. Also note that a request is considered filed when it is received by the agency and not when it is placed in the mail. So this brings us to the hearing process. You may be familiar with trials from shows like Law & Order, but this isn't quite the same thing. Here hearings take place either by phone or in person depending on your preference. Also, this is a hearing, not a trial. The decision is made by a hearing officer, not a jury. The process, however, is similar, similar in that at the hearing, you will have the opportunity to present new medical records and question witnesses. And you will also be able to present your side as to why you think you qualify for benefits. So do I need a lawyer? The short answer is no. In this type of hearing, you can represent yourself or have a friend assist you. Of course, you can always bring a lawyer should you choose to do so. So what do you do if you get denied at the hearing? First, you can appeal the denial to the District Court of Appeals. This is a formal court and is very different from the initial hearing. Second, you can try and reapply for services. Just because uh, you were denied does not keep you from reapplying. And last, you can always try and get your services covered by other means. For example, Medicaid may now be covering some services, uh, such as Applied Behavioral Analysis Services. Blaze will now discuss what happens if you get approved. If APD does deem you eligible, you or your child eligible, to receive services under a Medicaid waiver program, you will be placed on a waiting list. The APD Central Office maintains a statewide wait list of individuals who have requested home and community-based services. A person's position on the waitlist is based upon when Medicaid waiver eligibility was established by an APD office. There are exceptions to this waitlist for individuals who are deemed to be in crises. These individuals are moved to the top of the waitlist regardless of when they were determined to be eligible. Placement of any individual on a waitlist for services does not necessarily mean entitlement to those services. The final determination of the applicant's eligibility for a waiver program is made at the time that a vacancy and funding is available and prior to enrolling that individual in a Medicaid waiver program. As I mentioned previously, there is a crisis exception found in the Florida Administrative Code where APD may enroll individuals who are determined to be in crisis in one of the waiver programs regardless of where they are on the waiting list. The APD Central Office Crisis Review Team is responsible for reviewing crisis referral packages sent to them by an APD local area office on a monthly basis. These packages contain assessments, correspondence, and documentation that addresses an individual's need to be placed in a waiver services program due to a crisis that is occurring in their lives. Referrals and supporting documentation are reviewed and a decision is made as to which referrals meet the criteria for being in crisis. Primary criteria that is considered before determining if someone is in crisis and should be moved to the top of the wait list is whether or not the individual is homeless or is in need of an emergency placement, or if the individual is in danger of, of confirmed abuse or neglect, or is likely to, be, to result in harm to themselves or to others, or if the individual's caregiver is under extreme duress and is no longer able to care for that individual. These individuals would be considered to be in crisis and would be moved to the top of the wait list, regardless of when they were determined el to be eligible for waiver services. When you do get off the waitlist, APD will provide you with information related to your service options and help you along with your decision-making process. Once you're enrolled in the waiver program, you will select a waiver support coordinator who will advocate on your behalf and help you to get your needs met through natural and community resources, various state agency programs, and the Medicaid waiver program that you are enrolled in. You may request a change in your waiver support coordinator for any reason at any time throughout your Medicaid waiver enrollment. Individuals are allowed to select their top two preferences amongst a vast list of service providers. 
Similar services are grouped together in service families to help facilitate your decision-making process. These providers will be the people that will be giving you the supports and services that you need wherever you choose to receive them. APD is currently using a tier system in order to, once people get off a waitlist, in order to organize the administration of waiver services. The tier system calls for waiver clients to be assigned to one of four tiers based on an individual's assessed levels of need, their circumstances, and their living situation. These tiers determine how much funding for services each individual can get and what kind of services you may get each year. When you receive your, your tier assignment, remember that you do have a right to challenge your tier assignment. You can refuse to change your support plan or reduce your services, and you have a right to request an administrative hearing, just like the one Rachel previously spoke about. If you do request an administrative hearing, within 10 days of your change in a tier assignment, you will continue to receive services through the administrative hearing process. APD is now transferring to the iBudget system, although this implementation may take some time. iBudget Florida is a way for APD to better manage the waiver system. It will also give you more choices and control over the administration of your services. Under iBudget, you will get a budget, a set amount of funds for your waiver services for a given year. If you are placed on the, waiver, on the tier system prior to the implementation of the iBudget process, don't worry. You will move from your tier assignment into the iBudget waiver system seamlessly. Under iBudget Florida, you will get to make more decisions about how you spend your budget for services, so long as your health and safety needs are being met. However, you will need to make your budget last through the end of the service plan year. Budget amounts will be changeable only if there's a dramatic change in an individual's situation which leads him or her to be unable to meet their critical health and safety needs under the current funding amounts. But don't worry, you don't have to do all this by yourself. You will have your waiver support coordinator there to help you. You may choose to continue with the same waiver support, waiver support coordinator or service provider if you so choose throughout your transition to iBudget Florida. APD will determine your new individual budget or iBudget after it considers several factors including a review process that will look at an individual's age, their living situation in terms of if they live at home, in their family's home, or in a group home, and the kind of support that that individual needs. All of this information will be used by APD to determine the amount of money that can be approved in order to assist you in meeting your needs. The iBudget Florida funds should be used for those service needs that cannot be met by other additional resources. The new iBudget electronic system should reduce the amount of paperwork and allow your waiver support coordinator to have more time to help you find alternative resources to provide you with the supports and services that you need. And finally, we've provided a list of resources and valuable links where you can find more information about the programs and supports and services that we've spoken about today. Feel free to, to use any of these resources, and we've also included the contact information for the Children Youth Law Clinic at the bottom of this slide. You can always contact the clinic if you have any questions about this presentation or need assistance with any pending legal matters. Thank you for watching this presentation.